now I can see. And now we can finally record. Welcome back to Zero Point Reviews. We got a very special event this time. We're a little late for Valentine's Day, but we're not too late to check out a new film. Valentine Bluffs, a fan film. And, you know, this is one of those that was supported by Indiegogo. And they had a couple sponsors jump on board with like Fright Rags and Nightmare Toys, of course. But largely, I supported this through Indiegogo because... I'm a fan of the original My Bloody Valentine, so this is kind of a uh, kind of a sequel to it. And uh, Kevin, we both finally got to check this out. What did you think of this one? Well, uh, wasn't quite sure what to think going in. All I knew is that you said it was a fan film, and my only exposure to fan films has been Never Hike Alone which I thought was thoroughly better than anything that came after Friday the 13th, part seven. This, um, I didn't quite have that reaction to. While watching Valentine's Bluff, I, I found myself liking this movie more than My Bloody Valentine. <clears throat> I, <laughs> there was a lot of love put into this movie, and it shows it shows like even when it's campy it's fun it's supposed to be and they meant to do that it's it's not so much that it's self-aware but they just went in having fun and wanting to make a good picture that they'd watch and that's that's they achieved that it was a lot of fun yeah i i had a really good time if you really want to get down to the nitpicky stuff we can definitely do that but on an overall level for fan films, because I've seen quite a few, gone from like Never Hike Alone, Friday the 13th Vengeance, Roseblood. I've seen most of the Friday the 13th ones, and I've seen a couple Halloween ones, you know, on the Halloween versus Michael Myers, Michael Myers versus Jason one, which is pretty interesting. Um, that has Vincente in there from, from Never Hike Alone as well. So that's kind of a fun one. But of all of them, I would definitely rank this in like the top. I put this in the top three, I would say, of the fan films. And and while I might have an issue or two with certain things that they did in the film, I think overall it it's very well done. It's very well shot. There's some really awesome, very cool scenes. And the soundtrack and scoring of this is very on point. I think this is one of the best fan films that's been scored to date i would agree with that i mean i mean i don't have like the most vast uh experience of fan films like i said but uh, what little experience i do have of seeing things like this this is extremely well done like you said it's 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 got a soundtrack it has a score and it's a real picture just not put out through a studio and it's done well you there are moments where you could tell that this is a product of COVID times. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but the editing makes up for that in a lot of areas. Sometimes it's noticeable, other times it's not. But even when it's noticeable, it's really forgivable. It's right. entertaining, if nothing else. It it adds to that entertainment. Yeah, because all it really does for when you notice it is it feels like they're responding to somebody off screen rather than somebody in directly in front of them like one of the other actors where they can build a rapport they're actually just more of they're trying to do their part without the other people actually being there so yeah. it's an it's a unique challenge a lot of films and fan films had to deal with this and to varying degrees you know successful or unsuccessful they they at least freaking tried and they were able to get this finished and and shot during the during that time yeah i mean my hat tips to anyone that put out anything uh performance wise during covid like that that pandemic hit artists so hard oh, yeah. um so that anyone was able to make something during that time say like this or mystery science theater like my hat certainly like tips to them for putting up with that challenge, persevering through it, and then still making that quality product. And again, this is a quality product. The writing was there. The the uh, cinematography was there. The acting was there. They got people from the original film to be in this movie. It was that good. 
And well, they the also got to Uncle it. Lloyd in here as well. <laughs> so they had some fun. They had a couple fun cameos going on. My face lit up when I saw his name in the credits. Just lit up, and then to hear his voice, I love Lloyd Kaufman. I yeah, I he's fine. really do. And boy, like, did he have a hell of a time on this one. You could see it clear as day. Whether he's a pro or he's just having a fun time. I mean, it's really hard to tell if it's both or one or the other. Yeah. It, it, he, he has that smile on his face all the time. And he has this exuberant enthusiasm about him. And that's where I think that, that adds to what you were saying. Like, is he acting? Is he being Uncle Lloyd? Or is that just the same thing? And it's a lot of fun. He's just, he's a character and a half. Like yeah. I only own like four trauma films and they all are toxic crusader movies, but I've got so much respect for him as a businessman, as an artist that he's just, he is one of the coolest people on earth to me. Well, captain of like independent filmmaking, basically, in my opinion, next it's either him or Roger Corman for low budget independent filmmaking for God knows how long. And he's oh sure stayed at the same level, and he's still putting out content to this day. Yeah, I mean, uh, Corman gave us brilliant minds like Jim Cameron that eventually sold out. Jimmy, uh, yeah, and and Uncle Lloyd gave us wonderful minds like James Gunn, which is probably going to destroy the MCU in the next five years. So I will take go him Uncle Lloyd. the MCU over the DCU. So thank you very much for that statement, Kevin. You know what? Not getting too far off. I'm excited to see what he's going to do because he's never put out anything I didn't like. That being said, Valentine's Bluffs is really cool. <laughs> We're on time budget, kids. I'm sorry. Um, I can't. I can't ring that back in from James Gunn and, and Uncle Lloyd, but I'll Uncle Lloyd is... I'll do my best because you know it just goes back to <laughs> independent filmmaking and. You had an excellent creative staff on board with this. They had a clear passion for the original project. And hey, this is where filmmaking begins. You know, you start with something like this, you move on to something more. Like if there's going to be like maybe a sequel, the way the movie ended was excellent because then you get, well, it's not said, but it's implicated or inferred that the real Axel has showed up at the end of the movie and he's ready to take on the town of Valentine's Bluffs. Or Valentine's well, Bluffs. Least, yeah, at the very least, take the mayor for a ride. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty impressive. I was happy to see Axel at the end. Um, well, see. We don't really see his face, but again, like you said, heavily implied. And, That's and the word I was looking for, yeah. Yeah, it's completely plausible that Axel is still down there in those mines. Completely albino and out of his fucking mind. <laughs> yeah, it looked like he was kind of hanging out under in some basement of some building or underdwelling or whatever it was. Because when you see him at the end with the one part of the arm missing, he's just playing with his prosthetic off to the side. And it's like, Listening to a radio, I wonder where exactly he's at. But, you know, if there's going to be another <laughs> one of these, okay, I'd be curious to see how it unveils and develops from there. But, like, I don't know. Tom Smith, director, writer, hey, we'd be curious. You you did a good, great enough job on this one for us to want to see more. Yeah, but the way you just put that made me ask how the reception is on that radio down down in the mines. <laughs> I don't um, think he was. I honestly don't think he was down in the mines. I it looked like he oh. was on in a basement or some under dwelling of some building. So maybe he's just been camped out under something for forever. Because at the end of my bloody Valentine, he got away and he was a coal miner. He knew how to get out of that mine, so there had to be another way out. He turns to the mole people, I'm sure. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> Incredibles. Just saying. Morlocks. Or Morlocks. <laughs> Whoa, I just froze. Right, we're Alrighty frozen then. today. We're not doing Suburban Commando, yo. 
And we're back. Thank you, technical difficulties. I'm going to throw up a new image just for that. <laughs> Kevin I know, like, how they did up. You know, we mentioned fan films. They did have a nice little uh, cameo spot or a callback or whatever you want to call it in the bar. They were playing, like, Roseblood, a fan film, a Friday the 13th fan film. And that's where the reference was to it. If you stayed through the end credits, I think one of Tom's kids actually was wearing uh, a nicely decked out Voorhees mask while they were playing through all the special thanks for all the Indiegogo contributors and and supporters. That's cool. I did not see that. No. Yeah. I mean, if you stayed through the credits there, that's where I'm like hearing some like pretty tasty hard rock metal music. I was, I was like, yeah, mother, this is good. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I, I, I tend to like that, but we've been doing so much Hannibal lately that I've been listening to the soundtrack to Hannibal, <laughs> which is the complete opposite of good hard rock. No, that's what you want to cook to. This is one you want to murder to. So, hey, they, they hit it. The, the only thing that I think this movie was missing that would have made it perfect a little self-aware, yes, but perfect, was Devo's version of working in a coal mine. It, it would have just, it would have, it would have popped. Not as much as the hard rock song, because we're well past that in life, but... Uh, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, that song needs to be put in another good movie that's not heavy metal. Yeah, that's again, true. This was a good movie, and it, it, it would have fit for that. Yeah, not I'm not really is. too big on like movies that mine, no pun intended, that mine like hard rock metal or whatever to death the whole movie. I want it for like a beginning theme or an end theme or for the credits. You know, that's that's just how it should be. Like Monster Magnet at the end of like Soldier or whatever. Yeah, but like if you're in the theater. And they launch that music at you at the very end at the credits and the lights come up and there's a shit ton of people and you have to pee. I'm ready to like just punch somebody to that music all the way to the history to fucking get there. If you got to so, do that after an hour and 30 minute movie, you have a different problem. Uh, yeah, man. I'm like in my 40s. The I've got the bladder of a three year old. And I know because I've got one. <laughs> you got a couple of them. <laughs> yeah anyway with you. they really wanted to see what i was watching this week and i'm like no no the special no. effects are a little too good <laughs> yeah, which that's the, another thing that this, this holds up yeah you you see more gore in this than i think you did in the original movie and uh, granted we are much looser with what what we could show now uh, and it, special effects are much cheaper than what they were back then. Yeah, but I think they had a real leg up in in the special effects department on this time. Oh yeah, I I didn't catch the name that I wrote down. I mean, I watched the movie like three times in a row, <laughs> but um, the, there was only one particular scene that I was like, I don't think this was the practical effects team that the, it was after the um the miner ripped the heart out. Of the girlfriend. Ah. And then then you just have the static shot of her with like some CGI like little heart opening on her. I, I think they could have just cut to the scene of off to the side, which is the bloody area, and not worried too much about like the full frontal shot of the heart being having been ripped out. But that's just me. Yeah, but I mean sometimes that well, I guess there wouldn't be any blood spurting with there. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been even funnier is if he got the heart out and it was still like <laughs> that might not have been in the budget though <laughs> hey when you're independent you got to do what you got to do and mm -hmm. for what they did i don't know what their budget was but there was some excellent work i i, I do have a couple favorites but i gotta say my favorite death was probably the nail gun death the nail gun death the very first one Oh, I guess the bartender. <laughs> it, you know what? I wasn't sure about that at first because I thought the bartender was going to turn out to be Harry Warden because the bartender in this 
plays Harry Warden in the 2009 version of, of My Bloody Valentine. So I was really like watching that to see if that's who that was going to be. And then the second time around seeing it like, oh, no, OK, he did get whacked first. So, yeah, you're right. I just I didn't remember that's who it was. Yeah, I mean, it's better they probably played off the original My Bloody Valentine than the remake, even though I did like the remake. Yes, yeah. Um, I I want to let you live that down, but I can't. I can't. <laughs> it was That's dumb. okay. You don't have to like everything I like. I know, but it's just... It, I, I, I wanted a good swerve, and, and the only goodness to it that they had was that uh Ackles character or TJ in that is it has multiple personalities so it's not like he's going out there to kill he has disassociated personality disorder that was the only part that was kind of good for that and you only see that in the moments where it's shoot him or shoot him is is Kerr Smith the bad guy or is Jensen Ackles and yeah, yeah, it was both just and started out later. Yeah, and that's that's eventually what Kerr Smith said. And I'm kind of like, God, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, which that that was the good part for me in that movie. It's it's not that I don't like Jensen Ackles. Again, I'm just really sore for how he treated Clark in Smallville. But Kerr Smith was I've liked him since Final Destination, so I was really excited to see him. Yeah. So, but this this. It didn't need to play off the 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 remake. It it goes directly homage wise to the original. Yes. Uh, people that were in the original that that were killed, their kids or their families are in this, and like nobody gets left out. No, uh, they don't. Oh, uh, god! The gentleman in the in the movie that had the handlebar mustache that got killed, his kids are in this, or his brother no it was, it was his kids but yeah it's like everyone gets mentioned at some point like they they make their own movie but they're definitely standing on the foundation of, of what they truly loved of the first film and they didn't really leave anything out like nothing was forgotten no bit of lore was left out and you see that at the end at the very end like you said with axel or presumably axel yeah and it it doesn't give you that questioning like the 2009 movie did of of who the killer is going to be. You have a pretty good idea of who it's going to be, but it leaves you with this question of nature versus nurture. So it's like it's it's not the big surprise that he's Axel's son. And then it's interesting to see once he realizes that how he starts you know having auditory hallucinations. And it was really neat. Like, it wasn't eye-rolling at all. There's only so many people the bad guy could have been. And it was a good bad guy. What did you think of the reveal for for who the killer was in this one? Um, I liked it. I did like it because, like, he pretty much had a shitty experience there. Like, he had the bum deal of seeing his dad run out on, on his mom at, at the very beginning. Uh, TJ running out on Sarah, which did not make her look good in general. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> you find out that that's not TJ's son. That's actually Axel's son. And so oh, then, Axel. like I said, it leaves you with nature versus nurture. Did he go to kill people once he found out that his his dad was was Axel, or did that trigger something that was in his mind, some hereditary predatory instinct that just set him off? And the movie kind of leaves you asking that, and it, it never never truly answers it. And I really liked that about it. Yeah, the my only kind of question about any of that is more of like a timing sort of thing. There's a couple times during the movie where it feels like something's missing or we glossed mm -hmm. over a scene or something might have been deleted in the editing bay. Um, but like, you know, his girlfriend runs off. She goes, she checks out her phone. She's going to go check out like the museum or the party. And at the same exact time, he shows up there in the minor outfit. Yet she just left him passed out on the hotel bed like, 
a couple scenes earlier. So if she got there <laughs> in the car, I know I'm overthinking this clearly, but if she got there in the car and he shows up literally like 10 seconds later, how did that really work out? I don't know. I felt like something was missing there. And then later on, like, it's like, you know, we go from Kelly being alive and being rescued from the mine. And then the next scene, it's the funeral. And it's like, wait a minute. You just rescued her. And now she's dead in the next scene. Why? What is missing here? Like, were her injuries that bad? You know, I don't know. There was just a couple instances of like a couple scenes later, you're wondering, wait, what? And I'm not trying to be an overthinker or overanalyze it too much, but I did notice it a couple of times and it's a horror movie. I ultimately, I don't really care that much, but if I'm noticing it a couple of times, it feels like something got a little cut out. Um, it did, it did. And that's, that's one of the things that I actually highlighted in my notes. Um, if I could read it, um, <clears throat> Hooray, they saved TJ's daughter. Oh, well, Apparently she's not. dead. That escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Which, I mean, whatever. It, it is what it is. Yeah. I love little things like that. So, I mean, it, it, it wasn't like, ew, that sucked. No, that was actually quite entertaining for me. <laughs> so, thank you. No, and I've seen um, like way worse in actual legit movies from like the 80s and the 70s that did things way wackier than that. Oh, sure. Where the heroine sure. actually kills the bad guy and then the next scene they're actually dead too. Wait. <laughs> what? Nobody's alive at the end of this fucking movie? What are you doing? <laughs> That's not uh, what it's happened like... here. It's just one of those deals. I'm like, eh, I noticed that. Yeah, it's kind of like a space mutiny. Where, oh, it's really nice of them to give that dead girl another chance. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, oh but anyway, we love uh, you guys. You did fine. Just this is the little nitpicky part. Did did you have any favorite moments with the townsfolk? Um, I I found most of the townsfolk pretty charming. To be honest with you. And I I want to say the one, the couple um, that ended up going to the museum that got the double impaling scene happened ah. to them. I actually kind of like their relationship. They seem kind of like people I know. So I'm like, oh, yeah, everybody just seemed a little familiar. So there was a good sense of like, yeah, you can relate to, to half these people. The only one I they kind of really went like nowhere was like the one dude who came in to dance with the other guy and i'm like we never went back to him at all <laughs> so it was kind of like no a... and another group that we never went back to was the two girls that were chatting yeah and one girl was was flirting with the other and and basically said is that an offer and the other girl goes no <laughs> and then the other one's like oh and she has the most like awkward look on her face <laughs> like she's yeah. like side-eyeing it I don't know. I, now i can get out of the way she's side-eyeing like oh shit never mind kind of like would be straight and then tie if she had one it's like the abc yeah. thing for the olympics the agony of defeat yeah, like you, you'd want to hear some like '60s folk music, <laughs> Art Garfunkel or some shit. But yeah, they didn't go back to her or either of them, and that was kind of crappy because they were fun. Like that, that really was a fun scene. Um, and then the guy at the beginning in the bar that had the commercial where everyone was shitting on him, he's like, "Yeah, fuck you too." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt that character inside. I did. <laughs> oh and then <laughs> this guy that, that that keeps everybody's beer when they check out like <laughs> god bless his heart for that that was <laughs> so funny the first time i saw this i just started cracking up because i'm like oh that's a full beer waste not want not yeah that's true like other dude went off to it, score with uh with miss boosom buddies you know 
Oh yeah, that I like pizza. <laughs> the 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 I Heart Butt Drugs logo almost almost went over a picture of her. Um, but almost that, that would have been. I'm not going to be a rude asshole to everybody. Um, oh man, how disappointing! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're not. But but I did pick on the the sister. I'm going to move for this for just one second. We talked about practicality. He wants to show you what she gets impaled on. So, let's take a look at this here. These roses are set in an X there. X really does mark the spot. Because as you can see, she's butt-butt naked there for a second. That butt-butt and that back is about to go on those dethorned, or not dethorned, excuse me, not dethorned roses there. That's going to fucking suck and hurt. Who does that? Who does that? She's wearing a teddy, dude. Nobody. She, she's not butt naked. <laughs> her back and her hair is going to go right on those thorns. I know. Like, that. that is truly going to suck for her. And and I felt bad for the actors having to lie on those things probably again and again and again. Well, unless they trim the thorns off, but you wouldn't know that. Yeah, that's that's true. And it, it, it works out better in my mind thinking that the thorns are there because then it's just funnier and more entertaining to me. Um, we don't kink shame. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> you do. <laughs> I, I only kink shame the like, people that, that live much naughtier than I do because I can't live vicariously through them. But um, yeah, I've I've got kids and a family. I can't do shit like that. But going back to this, the I got confused at first that the when there was going to be the hot sex scene that turned out not to be the hot sex scene, where uh, the killer's in the mask and the girl's thinking that he's getting that her boyfriend's getting, getting freaked out. Yeah, and he and he puts her head through the rebar which was a lot of fun it was the pickaxe was it the pickaxe yeah because he, he, plunk, he plunked it into the wall right right next to her and then he that's right that's the thing i the couldn't re- quite understand what she was getting into whether it was because it was outside or she'd never had it from behind from her boyfriend before i don't know I inquiry don't know. Minds, unsolved mysteries hey Valentine's Bl- Valentine Bluffs Part Two. <laughs> At first, I thought it was the sister. Like the sister no. was getting freaky with. Uh, I'm like, oh, 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 oh naughty! <laughs> like this, love triangles this is... run deep, man. <laughs> Pornhub, get your cameras rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they already have a version of that on there. <laughs> oh, at least 8 million versions of that on there. Well, with the sticky so, yeah, that... up on the background, miners do it deeper. That's probably the name <laughs> of the video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sorry. Not even the remotely. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, but I like I was so excited at first because I thought there was like some incestual murder thing there. And when I realized that it wasn't her, I was kind of like, well, okay, I could still have it written down on my notes. Just don't cross it out so I can laugh at it later. Wrong horror movie Uh, franchise for that one. Yeah, I know. And it was still wrong turns here. The wrong (laughs) turns here. (laughs) No, it, it was still good having her get chased out of the room on the camera having the the boyfriend get killed um and then he fucks her up pretty good in, in the mind yeah like what do you nail her hand to the to, the to two different wood. spots one's above her head one's below then he's carved up her face a bit i'm like i didn't realize how sick this fucking dude was until that point too because he's mostly killed it, everybody and which is like one thing and then the sheriff and TJ, like John and TJ, rip her fucking hand off. Oh, <laughs> like that actually gave me the heebie-jeebies because you could imagine how much that would fucking hurt. Right. 
<laughs> mm. And then again, two seconds later, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> that I guess the injuries expensive. were that bad. Like, couldn't you have just left her there if that was the case? You didn't have to rip her fucking hand off the thing. <laughs> yeah, dude was already dying next to you. Just send the sheriff out, call an ambulance. I don't know. Although they well, had a speak- ways to get out of there, so. Well, the sheriff was already there. Uh, well, he was kind of useless at that point, though. TJ was the one who yes. was actually doing all the fucking fighting. Like, there That's we go. True. But I did love uh, sheriff's, the sheriff's sage-like advice. You can't shoot a gun in the mines. And I just had to say about that, not with that attitude, you can't. <laughs> Damn shame. If you want to get the guy and everything else, shoot a gun. Just if you know far, far away sh- from the emissions. Especially if you know how to shoot a goddamn gun. And if you're a sheriff, you should know how to shoot a goddamn gun. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't have no parakeets to make sure that it was safe. And I don't know. But it it, it did lead into a fun fight. Yeah. Um, I'm glad TJ made it. I didn't want to see TJ get hurt or get killed. I didn't want to see anyone from the original cast get killed. It's like some um, sort of weird family feud going on with this. <laughs> it was a little bit like the killer has some real daddy issues to work out. Like he needs to find himself. And he had a good woman to help him do it, and he just didn't appreciate her enough to not eviscerate her. So <laughs> he's a little bit beyond help. Goes with family issues for five hundred. <laughs> so, and then the the only thing that you're left off wondering that this leaves out again is where is Harry Warden? supposedly he died five years ago from 1981 but like there's never been any proof that he actually did die it was just documented in the hospital wasn't it in the movie the original yes movie? In, because, yeah in in both well no they they verified he died in the hospital but they didn't update their records and that's how they knew it was not Harry Warden at the very end of the movie. So they knew it was somebody in town. But at, yeah, at this so point I mean, I, it almost feels like they played off of the original film with by acknowledging that Axel may be dead as well. But then we find out uh, Axel's actually alive. Well, it's implied. I mean, they didn't really straight up say it, but it seemed all the hints were were spelled out for you. Yeah. And see, I was thinking again that there was never any uh, body verified from Harry Warden. There was never any gravesite, anything like that. Um, That it just, like, maybe Paul the bartender really was Harry Warden. That wasn't a, a costume he was wearing. Well, no, because, you know, Axel's kid killed him. So, I mean, maybe, yeah, sure. That would have been funny. I, oh, my God, if he yeah, had accidentally it, actually killed the illegitimate original Harry Warden. That would have been <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> like, I'm a big oh, fan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Valentine Bluffs Part 2, The Truth About Harry Warden. He was actually the bartender that got killed. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, oh considering my God. he hated dances and shit, he loved merriment and selling people liquor. But He's it, it really up. leaves you wondering still. You've got this ballad and legend of Harry Warden, and you've never seen Harry Warden since, like, what, 1961? And, like, really, it leaves me wanting to know what the mythology of, of Harry Warden would be. Like, neither killer has ever been the scary bad guy. We've never seen the scary bad guy yet. We don't even know what he would look like at this point. So if if you go to some, you know, go to some professionals, he might look something like this. This is what he looked like in 61. After eating so much flesh, he might look like this now. We don't know. But we had to go for the dead. <laughs> Robert Stack. Yeah, the dead. Uh, uh, personality that... that knows everything about missing everything and monsters and who did it 
They still don't know where that son of a bitch is, though. Yeah. But anyway, that was, should have been funnier in general. But no, it's um, I would like to see something at some point with more Harry Warden because I think that's a story there, a vein that that really could be tapped really neatly, just like Jason was. You'd almost have to make that a little bit of a period piece, though. You couldn't really bring him to now because he'd be like freaking eighty years old. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, although again, they did that in Halloween, and... so uh, I ain't got nothing to complain about that. So. I'm still not watching that movie. I liked the second one. It was great. This was better than that shit. I've heard the third movie was so bad that like the only people that really liked it was like the Halloween 3 fans going, that was some brilliant shit! (laughs) All the people that felt like it turned it on its ear. Like, "Mm, no, I think you misunderstand the whole point of the Halloween franchise. And, of course, Blumhouse is trying to do something different. But I originally, none of that was intended. Part two and part three were supposed to be one film. And then once they got into issues with COVID and, like, production and everything, then they decided, well, we need to split it. That's how part two can be a little overbloated for some people. And part three, they introduced a whole subplot that was never there to begin with. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Not going to go into details or a rant. I like kills. I don't like ends. And we'll leave it at that. But hey, like I just said, this is better than Halloween ends by a country mile. From everything I've heard, I'd say yes. The, I'd carve a face and put it film? next to a billboard, just like, you know, Axel did at the end. Something for people watching at home. If you see the term fan film next to a movie, don't don't mistake that for being a student film or or, or something that may not be ain't. good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's fan films are made with love and they're they're quite good. Like they I said it used about, to be not so good though. So there is a little stigma to them, but it, these days no oh, no don't pay attention to that. Yeah, I mean it, depending upon what it is, sometimes it can be better than the source material. Well, um, as we're talking about like you know friday the 13th part eight part nine until they make a jason x fan film i mean i don't know i like jason x i know i'm kidding he's a fucking fucking idiot (laughs) well even even just to put it in perspective like with all the friday the 13th ones the halloween ones there's definitely a clear excellent level and a clear this is okay level and there's a definite wow level. And if you know what I mean by wow, it's, yeah, how did they even make this? Because it's so bad. But for the most part, a lot of the Friday the 13th ones, you know, t- they they referenced Roseblood in this. I've seen Never Hike Alone, Jason Lives, Vengeance. I could go down the list. All of them are very good in their own rights. Personal favorite, I'll save that for another video because we might actually cover some of those. But, you know, this definitely ranks up there on the fan film level for sure. So I'm going to, hey, this is a very, very passing grade by me. I think it excels. I think the writing, they kept it simple, yet they also kept it uh, complex enough to make you think about it while the movie's playing out. So I was pretty pleased with this. Good, good. I, I was too. I, I watched it live at the premiere um, just upon your recommendation. And and I'm glad that I did. It gives, well, one, it was just, it was fun to do. Uh, it was fun watching it with a group of people at the same time. Yeah. The the chat was very lively and the movie Good. was, was w- well received at the time. It got well over 10,000 views or 12,000 views in the first 10 days. And it's like, Wow, I mean, they came out of the door swinging on this one. They did a great job, and I'd say I totally agree with you. This this is a good film. Yeah, and they're rolling right along. I I haven't checked the last count, but you know, maybe I should have because I'd like to see where they're at now. I I want to say they're definitely in the teens, uh, between fourteen to seventeen. I can't quite remember, but they're still rolling right along. Two weeks later, nice, very nice. Um, 
I was poking around through YouTube earlier today, so I probably should have checked that. It's on me. Um, I, I I would like to see more from this group. They did a good job of of, of entertaining the viewer. They did a good job of of telling the story, whether you are familiar with the franchise or not. That that's hard to do with a lot of fan films. Any storytelling whatsoever, any medium, that's hard to do. But they pulled it off quite nicely here, it, to a point where it was more believable than the original source material. Yeah. Like, again, the original source material seemed like it was written by somebody's nine-year-old sister. If they ever threw another dance, he'd come back and kill them all. <laughs> You're like, well, okay. Um this this was smarter than that. I mean, it it, it stood on that foundation, but it, it it stood building itself on stronger beams of like logistics and rationality and believability. I agree. I'm never gonna forgive you for that. Never ever gonna forgive you for making me watch that first movie. Oh well, it wasn't bad. It was fun. But I was, I, <laughs> it wasn't great to you. Yeah. No, no, I just, I again, I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be like your Friday the 13th, Stepfather, Silent Night type of movie, Sleepaway Camp. And it was something completely different. It was fun. It was not taking itself seriously by any means. Uh, not to the point where it's like killer clown goofy or uh, attack right. with tomatoes, but it was definitely something that stepped outside of, of the box of what was the norm at that point for slasher films. And unfortunately it was something that never really picked up franchise wise again, like uh, Paramount trying with that remake. They could have done so much better with that. They could have put more oomph behind it or even Christ at this point, hire people that make films like this because the love is going to be there. And if they could do it without the fucking astronomical budget, that's, that's your guys. That's why I look at these as proof concept that this can be done and you don't need a shit ton of money for it. Yeah. I mean, I, heavily biased, I know, but Kevin Smith, that's what he's what makes him great about filmmaking is he can make a damn good movie for an eighth of the price of anybody else does. Oh yeah. So and 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 these people are, are just as good. They made a good movie. It was better than the original in a way, and it was better than the remake for me anyway. I'd like to see them do something on a grander scale with the franchise. Like they deserve it. They did a good job. Yeah, I'd also like to see him tackle something original, too, at some point. They definitely have the skills for it, and I would love to see where they go next. Yeah, I am, too. This is a good group, and I'm very thankful that you turned me on to it. And thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms. We got Facebook, Twitter. We are at Suns and Shadows. We're also on Instagram at Suns and Shadows Cast. We are at sunsandshadows.com. Thank you again, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.